Welcome to a lesson on the geometric distribution. There are three main characteristics of a geometric experiment. Number one, there are one or more Bernoulli trials or binomial trials with all failures except the last one, which is a success. In other words, you keep repeating what you are doing until the first success. Then you stop. For example, you throw a dart at a bullseye until you hit the bullseye. The first time you hit the bullseye is a success, so you stop throwing the dart. It might take six tries until you hit the bullseye. You can think of the trials as failure, 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 success, and then you stop. Number two, in theory, the number of trials could go on forever. There must be at least one trial. And number three, the probability P of a success and the probability Q of a failure is the same for each trial. P plus Q is equal to one, and Q, the probability of failure, is equal to one minus p, or one minus the probability of success. We use a notation shown here for a geometric probability distribution function. We read this as x is a random variable with a geometric distribution, where again p is the probability of a success for each trial, and one minus p, or q, is the probability of a failure for each trial. Let's look at an example. Suppose that you are looking for a student at your college who lives within five miles of you. You know that 55% of the 25,000 students do live within five miles of you. You randomly contact students from the college until one says he or she lives within five miles of you. What is the probability that you need to contact four people? This is a geometric problem because you may have a number of failures before you have one success you desire. Also, the probability of success stays the same each time you ask a student if he or she lives within five miles of you. There is no definite number of trials the number of times you ask a student. So in this case, we let the random variable x equal the number of students you must ask until one says yes. Next, what values does x take on? Well, it could take one, two, three, four, and so on, students until one student says yes, they live within five miles of you. But it doesn't go on forever, actually, because remember, 55% of the 25,000 students do live within five miles of you, and therefore 45% of the students don't live within five miles of you. And 45% of 25,000 is equal to 11,250. And therefore, the maximum number of students it would take before one does live within five miles of you would be 11,250 plus one, or 11,251. Again, 45% of 25,000 plus one. This would be, if you happen to ask every student that lived further than five miles from you, that would be 11,250, and therefore the next one would guarantee to live within five miles of you. Next, what are P and Q? P is a probability of success. Success is when you find a student that lives within five miles of you, which is 55%, or is a decimal, 0 0.55. And Q, the probability of failure is equal to one minus P, or in this case, one minus 0 0.55, which is equal to 0 0.45, the percent of students that live further than five miles from you. Next, what is the probability that you need to contact four people before you find a student that says, yes, they do live within five miles of you? That would be the probability that x is equal to four. The probability that x is equal to four is equal to the probability of failure from the first three people that you contact times the probability the fourth person is a success or does live within five miles of you. So we would have the probability of failure, 0 0.45, times itself three times or raised to the third power, and then times the probability of success, which is 0 0.55. Looking at the formula here in the lower right-hand corner, the probability that x is equal to k is equal to the quantity one minus p or q raised to the power of k minus one times p. Notice in our case, k is equal to four, and therefore the exponent on one minus p or q is three, and then we have times p. 
And now let's go to the calculator and determine this probability. Let's round to four decimal places, which would be approximately 0 0.0501. Let's take a look at one more example. Assume that the probability of a defective computer component is 0 0.02. Components are randomly selected, find the probability that the first defect is caused by the seventh component tested. How many components do you expect to test until one is found to be defective? So in this case, we do have a geometric distribution. The random variable x is equal to the number of computer components tested until the first defect is found. To find the probability the first defect is in the seventh component, we need to find the probability that x is equal to seven. Let's first start with p, the probability of success, which is the probability that we find a defective component, which is 0 0.02, and then q, where one minus p is equal to the probability of failure, which is one minus 0 0.02, which is 0 0.98. So the probability that x is equal to seven is equal to the probability the first six components are not defective, which would be 0 0.98 raised to the power of six times the probability the seventh component is defective, which is 0 0.02. Again, looking at our formula, we have k is equal to seven, and therefore we have q, or the probability of failure raised to the sixth power times the probability of success, which in this case, is that we have a defective component. And now let's go to the calculator and get our decimal approximation for this probability. So we have 0.98 raised to the power of six right arrow times 0 0.02 to four decimal places is approximately 0 0.0177. And then to answer the question, how many components do we expect to test until one is found defective, we need to find the mean, where the mean is equal to one divided by p, which in our case is equal to one divided by 0 0.02. 0 0.02 is equal to two hundredths, or one fiftieth. This is equal to one divided by one fiftieth, which is equal to one times 50 over one, or 50. Which means we expect to test 50 components before we find a defective component. Which is why the probability that x is equal to seven is so low. The content from this video is from the introductory statistics textbook from OpenStax, which can be downloaded using the link shown here. I hope you found this helpful.